Hey guys, Jerome here at 18 Minute Fitness Personal Training Studio, and this is a Pecha Kutra style presentation about my business and why I train people the way that I do. So for those unaware, a Pecha Kutra is 20 slides at 20 seconds per slide, and it goes by rather quickly. So I will put a link to this presentation and its associated notes in the description below in case you want to go back later. A little bit about me, I am a single dad of one. I have my bachelor's in kinesiology, currently working on my master's. I got my master personal trainer certificate in high intensity training, which is not high intensity interval training. I own my own personal training studio. I'm an avid reader and proponent of the carnivore diet. And in my limited free time, I like riding motorcycles. About my business, we opened June 1st last year. It's a one-on-one -on -one personal training studio where I train people using super slow, high intensity training principles, mostly machines, one set to failure, longer time under load, slow repetitions, and generally only once a week. And I'll get into the reasons why over the course of this video. Now, there can only be one most valid theory of any aspect of reality because there's only one reality. No two theories can be equally valid because they by necessity contain contradictory information and contradictions cannot exist in reality. So there's only one best way to diet. There's only one best way to train. There's only one best theory of physics. The purpose of exercise is to safely, effectively, and efficiently overload the targeted musculature to elicit the compensatory response of the five general trainable factors of functional ability, strength, cardiovascular fitness, flexibility, joint composition, and body composition. And I refuse to compromise on safety in attempts to improve those latter conditions. Now, there's a lot of scientific support for this style of training. Uh, this style of training is every bit as effective as conventional exercise for hypertrophy, which is muscular size, power and endurance, strength and balance. Slow lifting is also far safer. And I believe that everybody should train this way, but athletes specifically should train this way and then let their sport specific conditioning handle the neuromuscular pathways they have to perform. You don't burn calories through exercise. Herman Ponser was a researcher who lived at the Hadza. He measured their metabolism and activity and basically found that despite being far more active, they burn the same number of calories every single day as a sedentary American. He concluded the body will slow your metabolism as a response to physical activity. So exercising to burn calories or lose fat is a waste of time. You don't, there's no such thing as cardio anyways. You cannot isolate one segment of metabolism from another. All muscular contraction requires ATP. Most of that ATP is derived from glycogenolysis. A byproduct of glycolysis is pyruvate, which is shunted into the mitochondria through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. It goes through the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain, and produces 32 ATP per unit substrate. Strength training then, properly performed, is cardio. This pyruvate builds up. It's, some of it's converted into a storage form lactic acid, which is when we feel our muscles burning. And then even after our strength training workout is over, that lactic acid is converted back into pyruvate. It's shuttled into the mitochondria, and we are able to get an aerobic workout just from strength training. Why do I recommend slow repetitions? Well, it allows for far more control and better form. Lifting slowly produces more torque, which is more tension, according to the force velocity curve. It's less peak force generation, so it's a lot safer for your joints. And Fisher and all found that explosive movements are not recommended as they present a higher injury risk and no greater benefits than slow controlled weight training. Why do I only recommend one set? Well, that same study said that uh, the same adaptations can happen by performing a single set to momentary muscular failure. The American Council on Exercise says one set gives you 80% of the benefits. However, even if you only get 80% of the benefits, but you're doing... Uh, you know, only one set compared to two or three, that's half or one third the amount of wear and tear on your joints. Why 60 to 90 seconds time under load? Well, you want to allow a moderate time to make sure all muscle fibers that you're capable of recruiting are recruited. If your set is too fast, it's high force production. If it's too long, you may not tap into those faster twitch muscle fibers. And I think more importantly, having a repetition goal encourages the wrong mindset. Your goal is to not arbitrarily complete some number of repetitions. It's safely inroad the musculature. Why only once per week? Well, Fisher in a meta-analysis found that there's no greater benefit to exercising more than one or two times a week if you're training properly. Um, another study found that people would actually benefit from training less frequently if they hold their volume constant. Exercise is a physical stress in the body, and as such, I would rather err on the side of caution by giving too much recovery instead of not enough. Why full body? Well, it's a starting point from which I make adjustments and will change that based on necessity or based on the preferences of my clients. Um, another study showed that training individuals with isolation movements does not appear to be necessary for improving strength. Um, if a client wants to come in two or more times a week, I'll split to an upper lower split or a push pull leg split. Now, I believe every trainer has a tremendous ethical responsibility to keep abreast of the emerging science and update his or her training philosophy accordingly. 
It's also unethical to prescribe a more dangerous movement when a safer and equally effective movement is available. And this is exactly why I don't like CrossFit, kettlebell swings, powerlifting, Olympic lifts, or plyometric training for any individual that's not performing in those exact sports. Functional fitness. Uh, HIT absolutely improves functionality for individuals. I have an 82-year-old who no longer needs her four-point walker since she came to me. I have an 81-year-old whose posture is improving. I have a mom of four with rheumatoid arthritis who can now run after and play with her kids. And I have a 70-year-old who avoided shoulder surgery from his osteoarthritis with traction and strength training. Super slow absolutely works for athletes. This is Alex Fergus, who won the 2016 Regional Paleo FX Texas CrossFit Games, training only once a week for about 12 minutes, using super slow movements performed exclusively on machines. NFL strength and conditioning coach Mark Asanovich uh, was the coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the late 90s. Mike Bradley coaches at FSU in this way. Um, for aesthetics, my client Matt on the left lost 50 pounds in six months and at the end of our time together was only doing six exercises every 10 to 14 days. That's a picture of me on the right losing 90 pounds in one year, training only about 15 to 20 minutes a week. I'm all, me and Matt and the people in the previous slides all train basically the same way. So how I charge people, I sell packages of either 12 or 24 personal training sessions, $50 for 12, or sorry, $50 each for 12, or $40 each for 24. And then I also digitally track all of my clients' progress and I will give them charts like this periodically so they can see how they're getting stronger. Thanks for listening this far. This is my personal YouTube account, Jerome Armstrong, my uh, business YouTube channel, 18 Minute Fitness, my website, 18minute.fitness. Facebook.com slash 18 Minute Fitness, and finally 18 Minute Fitness at gmail.com. If you made it this far, thank you for listening, and I will check in with you guys soon.